Okay. Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Church Office podcast. My name is Gavin Smith and it's a joy to be here today and to welcome Penny. Good to have you Hi on there. the podcast, Penny. Great to be back. Everyone loves you when you're on the podcast. There's like life about you, there's fun about you. Uh, we're both serving in, in bigger churches and uh, yeah, both part of UCAN. You're a board member at UCAN. That's right, and yeah. We, today's podcast is about finance. We've been involved in some training yesterday. But before we get into the topic, I just want to give a quick shout out and a big thank you to a couple of people who've been in contact this week via the podcast, uh, been messaging. Bridget Jones from Kings Lynn, the King Centre. Thank you so much for your encouragement. Brilliant email and so encouraged by what you were sharing. And, and so I just want to do a shout out to you. Shout out to John Shafford in Surrey, who's also been so encouraging. He's been listening in every time on the podcast. So thank you very much for him. Penny met this really interesting guy at a conference a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Matthew, his name is, I won't give you his full name, but a church administrator from Dubai. All right. Kind of underground oh, church, leading yeah. kind of in the background of his church, uh, administration and ops. So um, really interesting. I'm, I'm trying to persuade him to come on the podcast and uh, I don't know what he can share and what he can't share, but uh, he's just moved from Dubai to London. His wife's got a job over here. So something quite exciting to look forward to on the podcast. So, Oh, we have um, we have a congregation um, in our church, which uh, out, well, many of the congregation actually have come out of the underground church in Iran. Um, really? Okay, cool. Yeah, it's absolutely fascinating. Just listening to the story, and they, I went to their conference in Germany a couple of years ago, and the the life and excitement and passion, I could only summarise it as they know what they've been saved from and they know what they've been saved for. And we take that for granted, don't we, being able to worship and being able to go to church on a Sunday. And if it overruns, we get upset. If they overrun, they're not bothered. <laughs> because they can worship in freedom so brilliant that'd be great to hear that's great I'm, i love the fact that the podcast has been listened to i think something like 21 different countries have listened to the podcast so it's so cool and thank you for listening in today so we're chatting finance we we did some training yesterday and a you can round table event fantastic job um penny give us a bit of a, a summary of who was teaching and what they were teaching and, and then we'll get into some conversation yeah i think i shared yesterday um the, the purpose of UCAN is um, to help people in their roles in, in their workplace, which in, in a lot of instances is, is a church in an administration or management role. But actually, we're more about the person as well. Yeah. Um, you know, it's about helping people with their spiritual life in addition to the, the practical tasks. So yesterday we were talking about um, we did some spiritual input and then some um, some technical input about um money and money management and financial management um, and Tim Wyatt who's a, a great friend of mine he's an accountant chartered accountant um, from a church in Leeds and yeah. um, so he was he was helping our thinking his two key points I think were um, around wanting to help build, build people's confidence in terms of finance um, and then he, he talked about or talked us through budget setting process, what they did in their church. And then we were able to discuss that afterwards. But then he was also talking about how we communicate financial information. Communication in what we do is so key, isn't it? So yeah. I'm sure we'll, we'll like expand that a little bit more. Yeah, I love that. I, I loved his heart. I thought he came across really well. Um, I, I certainly left the session feeling more confident and more kind of aware. I love the way he started with kind of breaking down the budget and saying, right, you know, what's realistic, what's factual, what's in, um, aspirational, you know, what parts of your budget are that? And to rethink about, you know, sections of your budget that are based on last year and, and also sections of your budget that are there to go, right, how does God want us to use this money to yeah. extend the kingdom, to, to take the gospel out there. And I, so I love this thinking and I, 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 worth clicking on to, to you can and, and listening to the session, getting the, the training notes that I know will become available in the next week or so. Um, can I just add in a point there? Because it's yeah, part of our discussion group afterwards. Um, one of the ladies in there was saying, yeah, that's how they prepare their budget. But then at their annual Thanksgiving day, and I love the fact it wasn't a budget setting day, it was a Thanksgiving yeah. day, you know, giving thanks to God for what he's done, but also in advance. They then share with the congregation if they've got a shortfall in their yeah. budget. These are the things we believe God wants us to do. How can you partner with us in that? Yeah. And I just thought that was an amazing way of not just yeah. sort of looking at it in an isolated manner, but this is whole church involvement yeah. in what does God want us to do? He's given us the resources. How are we going to use them well for building yeah. his kingdom? Yeah, it's true. And I think, Penny, you know, some of the people in my group, you know, let's talk about income first, I guess, and people's giving, because that's that's a key thing, isn't it? If your income's coming in as you expect, 
you're able to do you know what you're doing in your budget you can, you know your expenditure is just going to kind of flow out and work from there but people's giving i mean there was an interesting stat wasn't there that was published from an online you know that gathers people's um online giving do you want to share it with us because that, that was quite staggering wasn't it yeah i mean roll back to 2020 where um you know, we, we had a couple of days notice that we had to actually close our places of worship. And for those whose um, primary income source is the offering bucket or the collection plate, that had a massive impact yeah. sort of overnight, didn't it? Um, so I know a lot of churches helped transition their members and their congregations to online giving. Yeah. Um, but this particular statistic said that in the year of 2020, um the online giving i think that includes gift aid as well yeah. was 129 million pounds just through this particular online giving provider in 2021 however there was a 24 million pound drop so you're talking probably a 20 percent drop yeah, from there huge, and the giving was only at 105 million mm. so that's huge isn't it yeah it is huge isn't it yeah it's it's a reduction and we, we've known some church leaders who have you know have faced real difficulties and and no one that i've known has had to close down because there aren't any finances but but there are challenges isn't there that throw up of you know how do we reduce expenses for ministry you know do we have to let people go and um, there's some tough really tough choices isn't yeah. there that, that some churches are doing what was great from the people that i spoke to in our you can group yesterday after the session was that for many churches they'd already got a kind of standing order policy so lots of people were giving through standing order and i just think it, it is the grace of god isn't it to have a tool like that to have something set up in your church that you know enables you to budget well enables you to have regular income coming inside and, and i think lots of churches have, have moved to that and I th that's a healthy thing isn't it yeah it is i mean you know my passion is for stewardship i'm talking about giving and biblical finance and uh, we're in the middle of a generosity series in our church at the moment. And uh, the, the pastor's um, preach title last Sunday was um, Tithers, Tippers and Tantrums. Uh, and it was really interesting because we were talking about people's um, people's giving. I'm talking about, you know, what does the Bible say about this? And I know this podcast is about that. Maybe that's for another day. Um, but, you know, there, there are people who just sort of throw a few coins in the bucket. You know, whereas actually when we show people and actually open the scripture to them about what God's saying about bringing, you know, bringing the tithe back to me in, into the storehouse so that there's going to be food in the house. Um, you know, that that regular giving, it really helps churches, doesn't it, to, to help with their budgeting and knowing what's coming. So, yeah. yeah, it really does. No, it is really helpful. And I love the fact that when we were in our group um, yesterday with the UCAN event, um, there were people that were doing different things. So a number of churches in my group had pdq machines and they were thinking that we had a conversation about how do we reach the next generation encourage the next generation to give because those who are in their 40s and above you know are quite happy to set up a standing order have been regularly giving you know the dna of the church is very current it's very clear with them but for younger people coming in we you you can find churches where there's a delay in people setting up regular giving and 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 lots of people have come up with kind of pdq machines or or online giving was being pushed and um, to enable and help a next generation give more frequently and, and that was new to me so um, it's good to hear different things and be challenged in that way you know yeah I went to a seminar last week at a conference I was at that was um it was online giving so the stewardship around online giving and next generation um givers and how do we how do we pass to millennials yeah. um you know in in terms of their giving and what was really interesting was that the generosity level of millennials is significantly higher Mm -hmm. than the generosity level of older people yeah but they give to cause rather than just yeah. yeah just because so um we spent a lot of time looking at yes so there's a biblical teaching on on giving anyway but let's how do we how do we tell those stories of impact how do we make this something that somebody would choose to give towards how do we show them um, I say them because I'm clearly not a millennial here. Um, <laughs> but no, 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 never. Uh, I have two, two, well, four children who are. Um, but actually telling the, the stories of the impact, how do we engage with them? How do we build um, a story of your giving has enabled yes. um, into even our online response, even our automatically generated email that comes back with, yes, you've given, thank you very much. Did you know what we were able to do with that money? Yeah. You know, so those kind of things, are, I, I think that's part of the way forward, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I, I think um, 
uh, Tim's discussion about kind of communicating financial information to non-financial people yeah. was a really good topic. You know, how, how am I communicating our finances to the staff that need to know certain information, to the wider church and kind of our church members, um, and also to our community, how we're using funds and stuff like that. We, we, we hire out our building quite a lot and are able to use the funds that we get through conferencing and hire to try and bless the community, improve the facility, you know, sponsor projects and things like that. So it's, um, I, I was really challenged by that. I think, how do you, how do you tell a story? How do you can connect people to, to what they're doing? Their giving monthly has made a difference and what difference has it made? Cause we know it cause we see it every day. I see all the sheets. I see all the expenditure. I see the things that we're involved in, but for a regular member, they, they, you know, they wouldn't have that access to that information. And um, that, I think some of the points that you raised on that were, were excellent. I am, I've been quite challenged recent, recently about the, the mission of the church and how, how we convey that story to the congregation of what the church is actually doing. Because I think, you know, we're so fortunate to be involved in the day to day, what's yeah. going on. We, we get the chance to have the, you know, the evangelistic conversation with the photocopier man or, you know, whoever it yeah. is. Coming through, sorry, it could be a woman um, coming through the door, whatever it is. But the rest of the church don't see that half the time we have a staff whatsapp which is just alive all the time i've just spoken to this person i've just spoken to that and it cool. wouldn't it be great to get those stories out you know we're talking about communication here yeah. how good for the congregation the wider church to know you know all that's being able to be done even if it's just paying for the staff members cost but the staff member was there when that person who was broken came through the door yeah and not just on a sunday yeah, I love that. And I think we've all sat we, in those kind of church meetings or those Sunday mm -hmm. mornings where someone's presenting the the stats and the information. And and I was really challenged, how do we make this alive? You know, like I'll try and use pie charts and try and use things that might engage. I've seen other people, you know, have got their their tables and you, you can you kind of squint in trying to think, right, I can't even see the numbers exactly. But but telling it through story and and it's easy to do that with kind of mercy ministries or food bank or those kind of project things where you've got some some things that you can easily measure but how do we do that on some of the other things that are much more general budgets how do we connect um stories to the fact that you know the building and and you know we've paid off our mortgage how many of our members would know that our church building is a you know we're mortgage free you know um and that that's a story of god's grace and provision and kindness to us as a church and how do we celebrate that and how do we gather people to to go wow you know we would never have dreamed of paying off our mortgages early but we have and and yeah. we have because you've given and and that's incredible and thank you for doing that so um yeah i love that i love this points on that um and i think if um if you if listeners have got any other ways that they think are creative to do it then then please share it on um on the socials because i think it'd be i think it's a, a an area i want to not just hear once but i need to explore more and more um, and yeah. how do I do that with the team as well as, as just, you know, the wider church? I found actually just sorry, not not to answer the question, but in addition, I found that getting somebody who's not a technical finance person to explain it is a great way because yeah. people engage with that. Yeah. So if I stood up and started to talk through a list of numbers, I would have a really good go at making them interesting. Yeah. But I, I need to be always aware that I can go into techno speak. Yeah. You know, whereas yeah. I think Tim yesterday gave us a great, you know, a four point sort of where are we at now? Where do we want yeah. to get to? How are we going to get there? What else do we need? You know, that kind that of thing. Helpful, wasn't it? Yeah. That was really helpful. Um, I also really loved his point um, because we do need to steward well mm -hmm. the resources mm -hmm. that have been entrusted yeah. to us. Yeah. You know, we really need to be wise and faithful stewards. Yeah. biblical mandate you know I, I love doing that kind of thing and I have a great yeah. team who help me um but there's always that challenge isn't there when you get into the sort of slightly more complex conversations yeah. of yeah but what about faith yeah thought you said God was our provider yeah. well he is <laughs> so why are we worrying about that mm. yeah but we don't not worry we just have to our job is to be the wise stewards isn't it yeah you know yeah. so there yeah, was a great point sorry go on no, no, go on. No, keep going. Keep going. I was just going to say the, the great point, which is a, a tension to be managed rather than a problem to be handled, I think, is that, um, you know, you've got your, your group of finance people saying, you know, if you want to do this operationally, this is what it requires. These are the resources we require. Where are we going to get those from? 
and then you've got your operations people working with the pastors or the the vicars who are saying yes but we want to do this ministry and there has to come a point where faith meets finance yeah absolutely right yeah no it's absolutely right I, i mean i've been kind of living in that this week we've uh been talking as a pastoral team about the whole um I've, I've had a passion to talk about the rebuild so after covid how do yeah. we help uh, leaders and those working in teams and administrators how do we help them rebuild the church and kind of grieve the losses and be able to move forward and and um so we're putting on a conference in june uh, called the rebuild and um you start pulling together speakers and you start looking at the expenses of what it's going to cost to run this conference and you're thinking wow, this is going to end up being sort of four or five thousand pounds to do. Um, what happens if nobody comes and we've already kind of invested this into, into this area? And um, that kind of mix of going, actually, well, if we can put something on that's going to really serve, is God going to bring people to it? And I think within the first hour of us going live on the conference promoting it, there was one person that signed up. Uh, straight away immediately and, and it was just so encouraging thinking oh actually we don't know this person we don't know this church but yeah. somehow this guy has got hold of the conference and has signed up to come you know and um and i, I love that kind of thing is that, we, that we, we need to go and say right let's go and invest this money to put this conference on and and let's watch god do something that faith element to come in and um and i love the fact that we've been praying for it and we're going to be involved in in seeing different people come to it along the line yeah. Um, so uh, you know that it's that kind of uh, tension. But if you if you would look at it risk averse,ly you'd say, oh, that's that's a bit a bit too much money to be investing into a conference where you've got nobody uh, officially signed up already. You know, can, can you do I, a kind of pool and get some interest first before you launch it? But no, here we are. We're launching it and we're just throwing it out there straight away. Yeah, I was um I was in a conversation a good few years ago where somebody they just suddenly chuckled and said. I always thought accountants were geeks. But you're a faith-filled accountant. You're a woman of faith. Yeah. I said, what do you mean? He said, you seem to be able to balance the looking after things and the wise stewardship yeah. with knowing that God's going to do it. Yeah. You know, and, and he says, doesn't he, in Malachi, I, the Lord, don't change. He is our provider. And he yeah. promises that when we're obedient, he will bless. Yeah. Now, that doesn't always mean we get all our money back, but he means we're going to be blessed. Yeah. And that's not prosperity gospel. That's Bible truth. Yeah. He blesses us for being obedient. And if you know you've listened and you're being obedient to God in putting on something, he will provide no matter what. Yeah. And that yeah. might just be a one-off donation after the event to cover the shortfall. You don't know, do you? Yeah. But I genuinely always hold to, if we're doing what God says he wants us to do, he provides our needs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not necessarily our wants, but always our needs. Yeah, so, I love that. Go for yeah. it. I think it's right. I was talking to a pastor this week and and, and uh, he was saying that he had a church member that came to him and said, right, um, I know it's been tough. I know our giving's been reduced, but I want to I want to I want to underpin the wages of the staff that if you get to a point where you're struggling, not with us, but another church, a smaller church, wow. and they've got two or three staff working for him. If you get to a point where you need help, I want to be the underpin that goes, I'm going to cover this. And, and it's just remarkable, just came totally out of the blue and just absolutely blessed the leader that, that's able to take um, that whole concern and burden, if you like, for the finance. And he's able to put it aside and just focus on on what God's called him to do, that that ministry side of things. How can he rebuild the church now? And and I love that, isn't it? I love the fact that if we can be good stewards and and have the faith field that we're able to, in many ways, um, move forward and serve the church and uh, find joy in there even in these kind of difficult difficult decisions you know and don't don't rule out as well and i know you don't um there's a spiritual gift of giving Mm -hmm. of generosity i was watching a um a short film last night and it was um you know life with a purpose and it was from a, a medic a medical doctor who had a real passion for mission work. Yeah. So wants to just pack in at university stage and just go onto the mission field. And he was out in India and he realized God's call to him was actually, no, you need to go and be a doctor. Okay. Not to go and be a medic in the field in India, mm. but go and be a doctor because every time you earn and you can give, that funds missionaries at a much lower cost. But yeah. that was his spiritual gift. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, realized yeah. that God yeah. had given that gospel patronage, that, you know, that, that giving. Yeah. Yeah. to raise funds to enable you know mission to happen yeah. so there are people who will never get out on the streets doing yeah. that kind of thing 
but they will certainly be there, you know, yeah. and, and God speaks to them. Yeah. Before he speaks to us sometimes, doesn't he? Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, so true, isn't it? Yeah. There are people like that in our church so that just, yeah, faithfully, wonderfully, um, you know, their, their place that, you know, their part in the gospel mission is they provide funds and they yeah. encourage and it's, um, it's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so anything else that stood out from, from Tim's session for you, Penny? Or in your group discussion that you were encouraged by or surprised by? Um, I'm actually not going to go back to the group discussion. I'm going to go to right at the very beginning. I don't know if you remember, I asked people for prayer and praise reports, answers to yeah. prayer. And I've shared this a couple of times since because I was so blown away. And it's um, it's a, a, gosh, it's a, bad to say it's a revelation in the last couple of weeks, but it really is that we don't always have to fix everything. Yeah. God can speak to everybody, not just the people on the finance team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and in a couple of weeks we have something like that. But um, one of the ladies at the beginning was just telling us that um, they'd had a phone call out of the blue from the landlord and he just agreed to wipe off 18 months of rent. Wow. So it was amazing, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it's absolutely awesome. Just that God can put that into somebody's mind. Yeah. There might not even be a Christian who was doing yeah. that. Not that it matters. But, you know, God can speak. And I think sometimes for me, we, our, our job is to do our bit. Yeah. Our job is to do what God's gifted us to do and be wise. But he can do so much more than we can ask or imagine. Yeah. And I think my sometimes my narrow focus needs to be just lifted back up again. Yeah. And that was just one of those instances where I just went, God, you really are good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely right. Yeah. And, and I, for me, the when I'm doing the finances in the church, um, prayer is something that happens alongside it. So I can be sorting out the gift aid and just realise that we've got some new people that have signed up, that have given faithfully. And, and you you can stop in that moment and just give thanks, can't you? And, yeah. and you just go, God, this is incredible. You know, you providing additional resources and new people that are coming in and giving straight away. And, that, and that's wonderful. And then you like you say, you can you can see God provide a resource um or a person or you know you've had a rebate on the vat or you know something happens that's out of the blue and you just got to stop and give thanks isn't it and so this kind of faith meets kind of operations there's there's prayer in the middle of this as well isn't it for, oh, for thanksgiving it. <laughs> and there's prayer in the middle of, this of going lord we need your help in this um yeah. so we were we got to a point where our gas contracts and electricity contracts have come to an end and we're in this kind of energy crisis and I'm thinking, Lord, would you help us do this? And, and our building's quite big. And so um, there's only three or four providers that can provide uh, energy to us because of the number of units that we use. I don't know if you're similar to that. Yeah. And so you're limited to a number of companies. And um, we're thinking, how on earth are we going to get a contract? Uh, how on earth are we going to be able to find something that's sustainable and workable? Um, without it being too much of an increase and um, God just provided uh, I say British gas and we just came across a, a really skilled individual that God just seemed to just appoint for us to speak to that made the process so easy and we were able to sign up to a contract before everything just went mental on the prices and so we've seen like a 40% increase but for some churches they've seen 70 80 percent increase in in there and i mean we're putting out something like fifteen thousand on gas fifteen thousand on electricity um a year and um you know those kind of increases uh, are crippling aren't they to to a church budget and so but god's provided even in that kind of situation where nobody else in the church is going to be necessarily interested in the gas and electricity prices they're probably concerned about their own thing but there's a story in there and there's prayer in there and there's just thanksgiving in there. And I love that part of our job. I, I love that's how it connects to the kind of spiritual um, faith and ministry and, and, and ops and faith. All, all of those things are just mixed in together. And I just I just celebrate God's grace. And we're kind of the first ones to discover it sometimes. And we've got to realise that that real privilege. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm and not to trump your story, but I just it was just Come a on, reminder Trump then. Um, we had a very large bill due to go out, and it was just going to of our available funds that particular day. It was just going to take us right down to, you know, we weren't going to go overdrawn, but it was just going to take us to we we've used, you know. And I remember saying to one of the guys in the finance office or the finance team, um, as long as we've got just enough for today, mm -hmm. we just need enough for today. Mm -hmm. 
and you know talking about it and praying it through that you know we had enough for that day and that was just like um god providing for the children of israel in the wilderness yeah. Yeah. just enough for the day if we've got yeah. more it's going to go moldy or you know that kind yeah. of thing the and, um, absolutely manner and quail that's what we were talking about and um so we in faith decided we'll make all these payments we're supposed to pay them on the right day we'll do this and then by the time i actually got into the office i'd had a phone call from another person on the finance team they hadn't spoken by that time saying you know i need you to be sitting down you will never guess we have just had a ten thousand pound donation in today wow you know and it was just one of those faith moments of we didn't know how we were going to do the next few days but god knew Yeah. yeah but we still have to keep on reminding ourselves that it is just enough for today that that doesn't negate good stewardship this yeah. is you know those principles are there yeah absolutely he can do whatever yeah. through whomever yeah because uh, he's god yeah and i'm really glad he's god not me yeah that's so true isn't it and it's, it's such a good reminder isn't it god is going to resource his yeah. church you yeah. know he's going to build his kingdom he's going to take the gospel and change people's hearts and lives and yeah he, he's providing for all of that the great shepherd is is doing that and that, that just gives us hope doesn't it and and joy and peace you know this kind of these fruits of the spirit are present because we can trust in a god who's going to look after us who's going to provide exactly what we need and um, like you say you know how can we be faithful how can we serve our churches and our teams and our leaders and our members to do this whole area of finance well um it, it's great it's a great adventure and uh, it's a privilege to be to be part of it isn't it yeah definitely i love it so penny should we call it a day there mm-hmm. i think that's i think it's good um encourage those who are listening to the podcast if you're not part of you can and you're serving in a role behind the scenes in a kind of church administrator or operations role uh, please check out the you can site and and see and, and you know the session that we're talking about is on finance and i know there's lots of different topics that are coming up what are the two round tables that are coming up penny uh, we've got one on well-being and the next one on recruitment. So people, yeah. people focus yeah. the next two, one in May and one in July. So these are these are great, useful and uh, available for members. So please consider getting involved in doing that. Uh, two promos and two conferences. So we're running a conference uh, called the Rebuild. Um, I'll put it on our social media for those who are, are leaders, those who are serving in teams, uh, church administrators, for everyone to come along to. So please. Uh, come and come and sign up and get involved in that. It's a two-day conference. You can are doing a conference end of June. Uh, That's right. All yeah. That information is out on the socials of You Can, so please check out those and sign up. These conferences are useful, aren't they? I, I think time away from the office does you good as a church administrator, uh, as an officer. And I think getting to a conference, getting some investment, put together a little finance budget for training. You know, churches are terrible, aren't they, for these kind of things. We'll fund theological courses and we'll fund leaders to do different things. But talk to your senior pastor, talk to your trustees, talk to those who are involved in making big decisions and say, could we put some money into this? Would you invest into me, into this area, that I can do a better job and serve more effectively behind the scenes? So worth thinking about. So any questions, like I say before, please contact the church office at questions at thechurchoffice.co.uk. Please look at the website. There's resources. There's also some finance guides. There's some other things that you can download for free that may just help you in your role or at least save you some time and a bit of confidence maybe. So we'd love to do that. Penny, thank you so much for your time. It's great to chat to you. Love having you on the podcast and uh, grateful to God for you and all that you're doing in your church and in UCAN and the wider body and blessing the church office. So thank you for that. We will see you again. Bye-bye.